up everyone? Just kidding. You know it has been over a month and a half since the last time I did a proper WWMJ video. Let's fix that. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of took the first excuse I could to get one more New York zoom in here. <laughs> hey, I actually like that hotel room, too. It's pretty cool. I like that New York trip, actually. Many years ago, when I was a little kid, <laughs> Back in the 80s. Oh no, please don't remind me of how I'm so old and over the hill, blah 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 blah. What is up everybody? So here is the last WWMJ video that I recorded at the end of May. It's mid-July now. That is what I call unacceptable. And that is also what I call a drought. <laughs> I love that New York trip, let me tell you. I like that hotel room. I wish I could have stayed longer. Um, you know, I could actually imagine myself living out there. Except uh, the traffic is nuts out in that part of New York. It's in Review Tech USA's neck of the woods, and I'm, you know, I'm not really too fond of that guy right now. Not so sure I want to move to his neck of the woods. And, um, yeah. <laughs> And the building that my company has out there in that in the warehouse district out in that area is nowhere near as techy as my main building's about to get. So unfortunately, my grand my mad dash to New York to get out of New England permanently is gonna have to remain a pipe dream for the time being. <laughs> Still though, this was a month and a half ago, heading towards two months ago. That's long enough to go without making any kind of hardware video whatsoever. So as much as I loved that New York trip, it's time to move on. I've been back in Connecticut for nearly two months. It's time to move on. Now the question is, what to make a video about since I've been out of the game for so long? Shovel Knight. This is the retro 8-bit inspired game that burst onto the scene last year, and it was fun taking this over like the folks' place and stuff, and folks were like, hey, uh, is that an old Nintendo game? And I'm like, no, it just came out this past summer. So, yeah. So, as you, we all know, Shovel Knight is a game that burst onto the scene a year ago, if you can believe it or not. Oh, this is a gaming video in disguise, isn't it? Nope, keep watching. So, this game burst onto the scene all those, uh, all those months ago, I should say, but it looks like it burst on the scene all those years ago, of course. And ever since I've been playing this game, I've been wanting to... I just... it just never felt right playing this game with anything but a classic Nintendo controller. Now, the controllers these days are pretty nice. I here's a Logitech, uh, what is it, an F310? Yeah, it's a Logitech F310. It does X input as well as the old direct input stuff, and it'll actually detect as a Xbox 360 type controller with these buttons and stuff if you put it in X input mode. And uh, basically, this will act this will function for a lot of games. But when you play something like this and you want to use a uh, D-pad, which is treated like a hat switch on a flight stick on most controllers these days, this doesn't cut the mustard. D-pads these days are an afterthought. Most games obviously are designed with sticks in mind. These things are like the hat switch on a flight stick, and it's miserable for playing games like this. There were times when I died in this game because the stick glitched out and it like went like down and to the right. Now, the next thing I tried do doing was using one of these emulator controllers. So this is a ret this is the RetroLink version of an NES controller, and it looks and feels very, very legit. Yeah, except it says Made in China on the back instead of Nintendo, unlike this real Nintendo controller that I have here, but we'll get to that shortly. So, Retrolink right here, this is a pretty decent controller, but it's not the same. 
And anybody who plays with these emulator controllers who played with the real deal will agree with me on this. The materials used to make this are notably inferior in quality. One of the things that it does is, of course, you would hit the start button and the start, the start and select buttons jut up a lot more than they did on the original NES controller. The plastic is thinner and rougher, so it feels more fragile, and at the same time, it kind of doesn't feel as comfortable to hold, even though this, this square thing was never a comfortable controller to begin with. Now, because of the, the cheaper, more rigid plastic than the original Nintendo, it has a lot more action on the original Nintendo controller. There's a lot more action on everything. From the D-pad, or cross key as we used to call it back in the not-so-politically correct days. Oh, religious reference! <laughs> From the, from the cross key slash stroke, if you're from Britain, D-pad, to the action buttons, B and A, everything had more action to it. So you really felt like you had to slam your thumb into this thing in order to do the stuff that you used to do in the old games back in the day. It just didn't feel the same. So maybe people who grew up with emulators instead of the real thing will actually like these, but I do not. So I was never satisfied until finally, check it out. Do, 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 do. This is what I'm talking about right here. Jump, you piece of crap. This is a real Nintendo controller using a. Oh, it's a little bit of a. It's a little bit of an effort to get this set up to work with Steam and Shovel Knight. But once you get it set up, let me tell you, it is absolutely worth it. Takes a little bit of work, but that work pays off. All right, let's make the magic happen with Steam Big Picture Mode here, because let me tell you, it is not easy to do this. It's not straightforward, Valve needs to clean up a bunch of stuff, and it is not, you know, the first time through, you might be a little confused. So hopefully I can save you some confusion with a little walkthrough like what I'm doing today. So here's what I went with for hardware. It's a Tomy piece of junk, USB to NES dongle. And it's not like maybe some other dongles or USB peripherals you might have used, like a USB hub or anything, because this device actually registers as a device if you only plug this in and don't plug in a controller after the fact. Now, I make fun of it because it's told me that's because I don't really have much respect for a lot of these third-party manufacturers because they often skimp on quality, and uh, that's the case here. I find with this adapter specifically, most of the time, I need to plug the adapter in first, then the NES controller. Sometimes, if I plug in the controller while it's, or in the adapter while the NES controller is plugged into it, it won't register, or it won't register properly, and it won't work. So it doesn't quite turn the NES controller into a USB PC controller. But just to illustrate what I'm talking about, with no controller whatsoever, let's go over to Tuxedo and plug in... There it goes. It's installing. Now let's grab the NES plug and let's get... let's show our skills with doing this one-handed. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Need some more practice with this before someone will buy me a drink for being able to do this with one hand. Oh yeah, it helps if I line them up. Uh, all right, there we go. Now we are plugged in. Next question, how the heck do we get this working? Well, here's the thing, this setup is not very straightforward. First, it's buried in big picture mode. So you have to go to big picture mode. It's not in normal Steam mode. So we go settings, controller. I don't know why it's not in the uh, normal Steam mode. Maybe this is kind of like the whole Steam Box thing, one of the things they're going to do, I don't know, we can speculate about that later. So it detected properly that it's NES PC Gamepad, which is correct, and it controls. Now this is not straightforward at all, let's hit reset and blow everything away. So what you have is what looks straightforward but really isn't. You have a picture of what looks like an Xbox 360 controller, and then a bunch of things, that you, buttons that you can assign. If you click these things, you go from big thing to little thing, and you have to hit escape to go back to little to big thing. Ah, but if you hit cancel, you, you back all the way out. So it's very, very goofy. Let's blow away what I had, because that's actually correct. Now, there is something that you might run into in terms of confusion. You may think, okay, we'll just go by the lights on here, right? So I can assign the D-pad, the A button, the B, or the A button, the B button, or start and select. But it's going to gripe at you that you don't have enough buttons uh, uh, mapped when you go try to save the configuration. You need to have these four buttons, as well as the left stick, assigned. 
Now even though these are digital controls we're talking about, you don't want to assign the D-pad, it'll complain at you if you assign the D-pad without assigning the left stick. So basically you're going to assign a left stick, and because it's digital controls it'll function like a D-pad anyways. Now what about select and start, because they show up if I actually hit start on here, this button lights up. So can I, do I need a Super Nintendo controller with four buttons? No. You need to map these four. However, what you can do is A, B, select, and start. And then just remap them inside Shovel Knight or something like that. So let's back out completely, edit controls, blow everything away, and go through this. Left stick X, push the button, get the little box instead of the big box, push left on the controller, it shows up as axis zero. Left stick Y, big to little box, push up on the controller, shows up as axis one. Primary action. Big to little, push the A button, button zero. Go back, big to little, push the B button. Tertiary action, push the select button. Secondary action, push the start button. Now, don't be confused by the titles. You just need four buttons and a left stick, well, a D-pad functioning like a left stick, in order for this to work. So after this, we would go to save, and it, there's a little bit of crowdsourcing in here. Help support this controller by giving it a name, because this uploads it and uh, and basically it's some kind of Steam default something. I've already done this twice, so I'm going to hit no thanks. I even have one called NES PC Gamepad for Shovel Knight. So there, we are in. Matter of fact, I can probably start using this. It's at B for back. I can start using this now to navigate the UI. So I am going through Steam Big Picture mode on an NES controller. <laughs> through USB on a computer. Let's go to library and fire up Shovel Knight. Zip a D do da. Not duh, da. <laughs> Howdy folks, thumbs up baby. So, it's good though to, re to check your controls when you get in here in case you screwed something up. Controls, edit, controller, edit everything. Let's do, let's do this. Up, down, left, right, jump, attack, inventory, pause. All right, we have it. And now that we have Shovel Knight working with an NES controller, let's play some Shovel Knight with an NES controller. Now the first thing you notice when you play with this is that there's less action on the buttons. The plastic is a lot more heavy, a lot more solid, has more weight to it. And since most NES controllers are going to be, are going to actually going to be used, basically, yeah, you'll, uh, it'll be less, it'll be less wear and tear or less uh, stress on your joints. I'm talking like an old guy here. Ah, right, less stress on my joints. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to play the Castlevania, obviously Castlevania-inspired level here. I'm a little further from the TV than I usually am when I play these games, so I hope I don't suck too much. But one of the first things you notice when you play this game with a real Nintendo controller, aka the way these retro-inspired games are meant to be played, is that it, everything is a lot more effortless. It's a lot more, you can focus more on the game and less on, oh, my controller sucks. So, the, there's, uh, there's moves that I do where I slide my thumb across the A and the B button to do fancy moves when I jump, and stuff like that. Ah, I can't use the ghost for that. Ah, I'm going to have to not get that thing over there. Now, it's a bit of an issue when I use the third-party so-called emulator controllers. Ah, bomb! Oops! Ah, I'm too far away from the TV, darn it. Oh. Okay, there we go. Fix that, Mary. I don't know how you get up there. Uh, I haven't been through this level very much. There we go. But everything feels a lot smoother, and everything feels a lot... Ooh, don't break that. <laughs> you really feel more confident, and if you spent years playing the real NES, like myself, you just get right back into it, like you just stopped playing yesterday. So, it makes me wonder if I can get this working with the Wii U or something to play virtual console games with. You know, can I get this working through the USB ports on the Wii U? So, ah, yeah, playing this far back from the TV at this far an angle is not a good idea. Fortunately, he dropped the turkey. But that's it, I mean. The jumping and attacking, the slider thumb moves, are a lot less painful on real controllers. And although most NES controllers today are probably going to be at least a little bit worn, 
it's amazing how well Nintendo built these things. I mean, this controller that I'm using right now is from is an original NES controller, and it's probably older than some of the folks watching this video, maybe by several years for some of you younger folks out there. But that the NES remains a classic, and I mean, you can still buy used Nintendos with new 72-pin connectors from retro dealers like JJ's and Lukey and stuff like that. I think JJ's had some around the $50 mark. The interesting part is uh, he doesn't have any that would be considered good condition. They're all either cracked or faded. Now, if you go to buy an NES from somebody like that and it's so and it's chipped, a lot of NES car a lot of NESs would chip on the edges if it got dropped or dinged or something. So it's actually very common damage. If I had to choose between a faded yellow NES and a so-called chip NES that had a piece of the side uh, panel and break off, I'd go with the so-called chip NES. Uh, that's a skull. I thought it was a diamond. <laughs> eh, that's what we get the ghost to back off. Yeah, this is awesome. Select and start don't come a mile off the controller. This is just awesome. Yeah, let's see, let's let the bomb do. Yep, there we go. <laughs> this is incredible. And the best part is you play other games, like I have the Castlevania Contra re-release that came out in the uh, early 2000s, and it feels, it, it totally feels natural. And this blows away using a general purpose Logitech controller for games like this. I mean, you want, you, you go to all the trouble to get games that look 8-bit inspired for an 8-bit experience. Might as well get a proper 8-bit controller to go with it. Now, maybe you could, oops, yeah, watch out for those spikes. They insta-kill you, just like in a lot of 8-bit games. Now, you could actually... Now, you could, yeah, some of you people, maybe that you're from outside the U.S. with a Sega Master System did better, maybe you'll get a Sega Master System controller, and that's your 8-bit nostalgia right there. Uh, Castlevania-inspired, but you can't attack the, uh, lighting. <laughs> All right, so that is Shovel Knight. Yay! Let's go to a spot where everything's not all dark. That's Shovel Knight, and it feels perfectly like it was made for the NES when you play this game with a real NES controller. So, folks, if you're out there, stop kidding yourself. You can afford it. If you went to all the trouble to play games like Shovel Knight, you might as well get a controller that was from the era that this game was obviously inspired by. Get the real experience that way. Or if you want it to be a little modernist, get a Super Nintendo controller because it's more ergonomic than the original NES controller was. So how's that for a return to WWMJ after a near two-month hiatus? Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.